So let's get started. I hope everyone can hear me okay. A warm welcome to all the attendees to this webinar. We have participants from around the world today, so very excited about this. My name is Tomo Amakawa. I'm the Director of Strategic Initiatives at Copernic, and will be moderating the webinar today. I'd like to welcome you all to the third and final webinar of this Impact Tracker Technology webinar series. Before we get started, uh, I'd like to point out a couple of features on your screen so that you can better participate in this webinar. The first button is the chat function, which allows you to participate in the online chat. If you have any technical issues, please raise them here. The second button is a question button, which allows you to submit questions to the organizers of the webinar. Please ask questions, as at, questions at any time during the webinar so we can address them during the Q&A sessions. The last button on the screen is the raise your hand button, which you, you can ignore for today's webinar. So today's webinar is split up into a few sections. First, I'll briefly talk about the Impact Tracker Technologies catalog. Then we'll have a brief presentation um, by uh, by representatives of Point Mapper. We'll have a brief Q&A session. Then we'll have another short presentation, this time by, um, by tier fund representatives. And then we'll switch to Q&A. And then we'll have a few words uh, at the end to close. So first, introduction to impact tracker technologies. Before we get started about the catalog itself, uh, I'd like to say a few words about um, our organization, Copernic. Copernic's uh, mission is to connect simple technology with last mile communities to reduce poverty. And by technologies, we mean products like water filters, solar lights, uh, and clean cook stoves. Copernic was established a few years ago by, um, by two individuals, Toshi Nakamura and Eva Wojkowska. And to date, we have um, implemented about 120 projects in 20 countries, reaching 215,000 people through the distribution of 40,000 units of products. There's a map on the lower left um, corner of the screen that shows the geographical spread of our projects. And they mostly focus in, uh, on South and Southeast Asia. So the distribution of uh, clean um, technologies is our core uh, business model. But we also engage in rich research projects and consulting assignments. And this impact tracker technology work falls under the research um, arm of the organization. So the key question that drove this research is, what if nonprofits and social enterprises were able to report real time large-scale data on their social impact in an affordable way. And the key terms here are real-time, large-scale, and affordable. As you know, many ICT tools are out there to help organizations track social impact. At the same time, organizations are under pressure to measure their performance and results. So there's supply and demand, and we wanted to bridge this gap. Uh, this research is fully supported by the Impact Economy Innovations Fund in East and Southeast Asia, which is funded by the Rockefeller Foundation and e Asia Community Ventures. It's a one-year research that started last November and ends this month. The research deliverables include the, the online catalog, which I hope many of you have been able to see. Uh, we're also publishing uh, pu print catalogs in hard copies. Uh, we're organizing webinars, uh, of which this is the third and final. And we also have a couple of launch events in Jakarta and Bali uh, that are coming up in the next several days. So the, the Impact Tracker Tech uh, work uh, is categorized into a few groups. Um, digital data collection apps, SMS communication platforms, geospatial mapping tools, and remote sensors. And today, we'll be focusing on the third category, geospatial mapping tools. Geoma geospatial mapping tools are tools that en enable visual compilation of information from various, various sources in the form of a map. 
These visual maps are useful for tracking information, analyzing data, and presenting updates. And all these applications are web-based and information can be sent through various uh, media. And so today, uh, we're very privileged to have um, Mike Santer um, from PoiMapper. Uh, PoiMapper is one of the four technologies that are featured in, uh, in this category of tools. So I'll hand it over to Mike uh, to uh, give a brief overview of PoiMapper. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, my slide, the slide deck seems to have disappeared from the screen uh, for me. Okay. Um, ah, here we go. Uh, it's yep. now back on. Yep. So ho hopefully everyone can see the slides now. Um, good, good morning. Uh, I'm based in uh, the UK, um, and uh, I'm director for PoiMapper. Um, PoiMapper is a platform uh, that was developed for um, the NGO market initially. Um, we now have commercial customers as well that are using our platform to collect field data and monitor operations. You can see from the slide that we support a whole variety of devices uh, on which we can uh, collect data. Um, from feature phones uh, that support Java uh, through to smartphones, both Android, iOS, and also tablets. Um, and data is collected in the field um, by a variety of enumerators or health workers. Um, we've got lots of experience with um, working in developing world or least economically developed uh, countries. Um, with people that maybe have very little experience of mobile devices. Um, this data can then be uploaded, as we can see on the right, um, to um, a co computer portal uh, where you can log in and you can see um, where the data was collected and also to visualize that data and analyze it within the portal. So uh, the first thing um, that I want to do is just give you a framework for these next 10-15 uh, minutes uh, of what I'm going to talk about. Um, so firstly, we're going to look at um, the PoiMapper product and uh, what it is uh, about us um, that really speaks into this um, market. Secondly, we're going to look at some of the features. And what I've tried to do in this section is to give you the standout features for PoiMapper um, and some of the benefits that those features can uh, bring to you. And then the third area that we want to be looking at is around case studies. Um, uh, that's going to be a reasonably short section because I'm delighted that we have one of our customers, um, David Deacon from Tier Fund, um, who will be presenting the second half of this session and giving you a more in-depth case study of how they're using uh, PoiMapper and also some of the um, benefits and also some of the things that we're walking through with them on. So I think it's a very uh, honest uh, appraisal of uh, the PoiMapper product for you. Um, so um, looking firstly at uh, about PoiMapper, what problem do we solve? Um, the first problem um, that we solve is uh, giving you the ability, if we can just click again, giving you the ability to collect um, data. Now, the, the collection of data is something that's been happening in NGO projects for a long time, mainly using uh, paper-based systems. Um, when we collect the data, that data then needs to, if we progress, um, um, then needs to be managed. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. And one more time. Um, and then from that management, uh, very often now we look at digitizing um, that, that data. And then thirdly, that data drives analysis for us. Um, but what this process actually leads to, if we can click forward please, thank you, um, is inaccuracy. Um, there's often inaccuracy that's introduced in the, uh, in the collection of data and also the digitization uh, of data. And that can lead in our analysis to incorrect decisions being made. Um, in addition to that, um, the speed of this process is uh, inherently very, very slow. 
Um, so not only are we uh, potentially making incorrect decisions, but we're making those incorrect decisions very slowly. Um, what PoiMapper gives us the ability to do uh, is to, let's go back one please, uh, is to actually lower our costs of this whole process of having visibility of what's happening on the ground and being able to make decisions where we can lower those costs and get better data that's visible to us faster. Um, so the real uh, areas that we look to address firstly are the availability of real-time reliable and accurate data from the field and secondly to actually increase the productivity of our field personnel where they in turn have access to real live information that may have been inputted by themselves or by other people. Um, so PoiMapper gives is the ability to share, to visualize geographically tagged data in real time. If we can click forward one, please. Um, so we can build forms using our data portal. Those forms can be pushed down to the um, devices. And as I said, we support many, many different types of mobile devices. And then thirdly, we can use the portal for the uploaded data to both monitor uh, and analyze that data. And this is a really important point underneath that every data point, every interaction, whether it's a data record that's been collected or a data record that's been edited, um, every data point is tagged um, with an audit trail of who, where, and when. So we know who has entered that data. We know where they were when they entered that data or edited the, the data. And we know exactly when that occurred. So that gives us a very helpful audit trail um, uh, across uh, the whole life cycle of the uh, data artifact. So if we step forward one, please. So, thank you. Um, so this is a little graphic that just shows you um, that, that process. So firstly, if we look at uh, number one, collect and update, um, uh, the devices can be pushed out um, Sorry, the forms can be pushed out to the devices. Okay, um, so Point Mapper is a complete system where we're able to uh, create very complex um, and support complex um, data uh, collection from the field on a variety of devices. That data is then uploaded at some point to the cloud. Now, importantly, um, Point Mapper because it is designed. Um, specifically for um, uh, emerging markets. Uh, it supports very robustly uh, both online and offline uh, working for data collection. Um, so once uh, the data is uploaded to the cloud, um, that data can then be viewed uh, on our map and also as a table in reports and exported to a variety of other uh, software applications such as SPSS uh, or Excel or Word or PDF um, and even other mapping um, technologies as well. Uh, within PoiMapper we also support uh, reports and um, we've got some uh, big developments happening around dashboards um, to, to monitor projects. Um, so that's all supported in the portal. But then really closing the loop is very important. And Point Mapper gives the ability to actually download uh, data points or download information onto people's cell phones, which can then be uh, viewed uh, on and offline as well. So Point Mapper really is a complete cycle, enabling you to revise and reuse existing data across your whole organization. And I think one of our unique uh, points at PoiMapper is that we support um, very powerful user account management where you can support your, own, your whole organization um, with many hundreds of users um, organized in groups and getting different collections of surveys in different languages. Uh, and this is all um, that very easily um, attainable within PoiMapper. So next slide, please. So Point Mapper is uh, also an out-of-the-box solution. So there is no setup um, process that you need to go through to set Point Mapper up on your servers. It's a cloud-based system behind a very secure 
um, uh, for, for framework to protect your data. Um, so it's a turnkey solution. Um, it's also very, very scalable. Um, so it works uh, well for s single or small groups, uh, up to um, 5,000 or more uh, field workers. And also PoiMapper fits pretty much any budget. Um, we've got a special offer coming for you at the end uh, of my presentation, but uh, just to give you our off-the-shelf um, pricing, um, we have a per user pricing of $30 per user per month or a transaction price. Uh, this is for each upload or download of uh, a form and a form can be as long as you like it uh, to be, uh, but that costs 30 cents. So it really fits any budget and we also um, uh, have an NGO discount that we'd be really happy to, um, to talk to you about. Next slide, please. So this is uh, just a few simple screenshots of um, our, our dashboard and also um, the, the view uh, from a map uh, of PoiMapper. So as I've said before, um, you're able to pinpoint exactly where the data was gathered. Um, PoiMapper also supports um, uh, location gathering uh, data in the form of routes. So you can plot um, paths or roads or um, these sort of artifacts and they can appear on PoiMapper and additionally we uh, support uh, polygons or area mapping um, uh, from uh, simple mobile devices. Um, you're also able to achieve um, grouping and categorization of geographical um, points of interest uh, using PoiMapper either in organization groups uh, or by um, uh, different types of pins that appear on the map. Now the data can also be viewed uh, in table format um, and you may also export that um, either individual record or other records through or collections of records uh, into Excel, Word uh, and a variety of other formats. So the PoiMapper portal really allows you to, to see what's going on in real time. Um, it's also accessible through any common web browser and, uh, and we are in some situations actually able to install the PoiMapper software uh, on your servers within your organization as well. Uh, but that's a bespoke piece of work and uh, it's not something that uh, many of our clients do but we do have some clients that run PoiMapper on their own server. So within the PoiMapper portal, we can specify the questionnaire and data input forms that you want to create within your organization, and they can be pushed out over the air um, to all of the mobile devices within your organization or a subset uh, of, of those people as well. And this is really important that we're enabling um, sharing of forms and templates across our organization and even across different organizations um, to uh, ensure that we're collecting the same sort of information uh, for any comparative study. Um, in addition to that, um, we can actually restrict um, the um, access to, to forms and data. So only the people that um, you want to see, uh, to be able to see your data actually see it. So moving on to uh, point number two, just conscious of time here. Um, where we're looking at the standout features. Um, the, the first standout feature, as I've alluded to before, is that we support whole organizations um, to, for collecting uh, the, the, their data. So you can manage um, your groups of uh, field workers and office workers into projects or programs um, or locations. Um, and uh, PoiMapper not only collects the data for you, but actually manages that data uh, over the long term. Um, secondly, um, you can group that data both uh, in tables for analysis or in the map view um, uh, in uh, groups that have purpose and meaning to your organization. So it's very easy to see the geographical spread of uploaded data points uh, and this gives you great um, uh, visualization 
of perhaps where um, there are areas that are underserved in your in your projects. And um, thirdly, Point Mapper enables um, instant validation of your data on the mobile device. So we support things like validation lists, uh, maximum and minimum levels, um, and a variety of other validation tools that actually mean that your um, your uh, field workers are inputting data um, that is going to be correct, correct, and is going to be um, useful within your project. Um, we also enable you to support um, unknown data collection quantities. Now, let me explain that uh, a little further. For example, if you're doing a household survey where you're wanting to collect information about um, the children uh, within that household, you don't know when you enter um, that house how many children there are. So paper forms will typically have um, many, many rows on a table uh, for people to fill in. Um, Point Mapper supports tables, but we also support embedded forms uh, that you can uh, instantiate for uh, a particular survey. So, for example, you can embed a child form um, into a survey that will collect uh, X number or N number of uh, data points uh, for uh, information about that child um, in the household form. So it's got a very complex um, but easy to use structure um, for handling these unknown data quantities. Um, fifthly, um, we can make very complex forms uh, that are very, very simple um, for the end user to, to operate. Um, so we support things like complex skip logic, uh, where you can say if uh, gender is female and age is you know, between um, certain upper and lower limits, uh, then you want to ask questions about maternal health or you want to ask um, uh, for various other questions. So you can have conditional questions uh, that rely on many, many different um, inputs from previous uh, questions. Uh, we also support lookup values um, if uh, they're important for your organization as well. And also reference values as well that can be uh, referred to across um, your, your whole organization and changed uh, that very, very simply. Um, we also give instant feedback as well through interactive reports and dashboards. Um, so Poi Mapper isn't just about collecting data, it's about collecting the right data um, and making that collection of data as, as easy as possible. Um, sickly, we can actually generate and send customized reports from the mobile device by email. Um, uh, these can also be sent by the portal. So this is used by a number of our customers who want to report back quickly to donors um, or want to generate reports that are sent to management from the field each and every time a, um, a point of interest has been noted or a form completed. Point Mapper also supports a very rich set of uh, data where we are able to attach images, audio files, PDFs um, to, to the form itself. Um, and we also support an updatable on-device library. So I know um, that David at Tierfund used this um, very extensively um, to support learning outcomes for their rural healthcare workers and also um, to give them support information on how to use um, PoiMapper and the other applications that they use in the field. And the last thing I just want to share, it's not on the, on the list, is that we also uh, will be releasing in the next week or two support for multiple languages. So not only can you share your forms uh, across your whole organization, um, but you can also put in language variants of the form um, which uh, are assigned to particular groups. So no longer do you have to make copies of forms and translate them, um, but uh, that's all handled within the one data table and the one database. So our application sectors um, that, we, uh, that we have at the moment, uh, water and sanitation, education, uh, program and monitoring and evaluation support, 
Um, we uh, support retail outlets, uh, surveys as well, and data collection. So I was interested to hear about uh, Copernic's work with um, low energy um, stoves. Uh, and we actually work with a supplier uh, of that called EnviroFit, um, where they collect carbon credit uh, information at the point of sale using Poi Mapper, and then that's uploaded to uh, our portal. And we also have customers that monitor uh, forestry assessments as well. Um, so they use our, our um, area uh, or polygon uh, mapping on Point Mapper to uh, monitor any encroachments or deforestation that's uh, occurring. So as you can see, there's a wide um, section of Point Mapper application sectors there um, that we support. So if we go on to the next slide, um, our customers are very, very varied across. Sorry, I think we got back one. Super, uh, a very varied as well. Um, you know, with many, many NGOs um, using Poi Mapper, um, we currently have um, Poi Mapper deployments in over a hundred countries um, uh, with programs um, uh, actively running now um, in thirty uh, countries across the world, um, with organisations such as Plan International. Uh, they're now a, a global uh, framework agreement with Poi Mapper, um, and similarly with Tier Fund as well. Um, Oxfam are using Poi Mapper to um, support their surveying of internally displaced people in Haiti. Um, so there's a wide, wide uh, cross section of people um, that are using it, and I just touch on two quick case studies for you. Um, so Plan International. I've been using Point Mapper actually since 2010 um, in Kenya, but in 2011 they started a project in uh, Thailand uh, where they were looking to monitor and encourage um, the adherence to uh, medical um, and pharmaceutical uh, interventions within uh, rural areas. Um, so they've used Point Mapper since that time to uh, collect patient information. Uh, actually, on feature phones, they started off and have cut, subsequently moved to smartphones. Um, so the information that they collect is about the adherence to medical um, uh, strategies that have put, been put in place. And Poi Mapper helps them to record the exact locations where the patients live and also how prevalent tuberculosis is uh, in the areas that they're working into. Uh, so the outcomes that our uh, plan of um, uh, have derived from this uh, fairly long uh, use of uh, Poi Mapper um, is that they can see accurately and precisely um, what's happening on the ground uh, through their health workers. Um, they estimate that they uh, can now work up to 30% faster using Poi Mapper and have actually um, uh, mapped that into at least a 30% saving in costs uh, for their programs. And also stakeholders uh, get real-time visibility into development programs, which has been a real um, quick and uh, useful benefit for them. Uh, the second quick case study is with Biocon Foundation, who are based in Bangalore in India. And they used Poi Mapper to support their uh, oral screening of cancer um, in the rural communities uh, around uh, Bangalore. Um, so with Poi Mapper, they're able to um, send information and images uh, to GPs in uh, the city uh, who will then actually use that information to screen uh, patients and to assess whether uh, those patients need to come into the clinics. This has dramatically reduced um, assessment times uh, from years in some cases to days. Um, because it actually frees the doctors up and they can quickly make a diagnosis without having to um, see the patient face-to-face uh, -face unless there's an issue. Uh, but So Poi Mapper also has won a number of different awards. Um, this is uh, one that I went to um, uh, in 2013 where we won the European CSR Award uh, for our work with PLAN. Um, we're also using crisis management and a variety of other um, uh, verticals as well 
but I think I've probably exhausted my time. Um, so I'd be delighted to um, uh, take any questions just after um, I tell you of a special offer for anyone that's on this uh, call or has been listening to it on uh, online in the webinar. So let's track back one. Thank you. Hello, it's for you. One question is from the panel. Uh, one, it's a um, question about GPS location accuracy. Uh, this uh, person has tried to map informal shops and town shops in South Africa and they have never managed to find an app that has a good enough accuracy um, and so wondering how Point Mapper um, is able to do uh, Okay, if I understand the question correctly because the line um, went out on me a little there towards the end, it was to do with the GPS location accuracy um, particularly use right. case in malls uh, in South Africa. So how does Point Mapper handle that? Um, well, the first thing I would say is that GPS um, accuracy is dependent no matter what software you're running on the device um, that the software um, is on. Um, so the GPS uh, chips within the mobile handsets that you're using are the critical factor in this because PoiMapper will um, just um, take the GPS reading from that device and insert that into the data artifact that you're collecting. Uh, that being said, we do have um, uh, the ability within the PoiMapper settings uh, to adjust uh, the GPS accuracy. Um, so the more accurate that you need the GPS setting, the longer it may take to actually uh, acquire that uh, GPS location. Um, so it's a trade-off really between time and, uh, and accuracy, but within Point Mapper you can actually fine-tune that for your use case. And then the final thing I was going to say on this is that um, if you are in a situation where either due to a fault on the device or for some other technical issue the GPS location hasn't been collected, then it is possible within Point Mapper portal to go in and manually tag um, the location of the uh, data point and that will then be inserted into that data record uh, and an entry put in against that data record of who made that change when and where they were at the time. Okay, great. So you can adjust the accuracy level um, or you can manually uh, input that uh, GPS location. Uh, there's yeah. actually a follow-up question uh, to that. What device would you recommend for best GPS location? Oh, that's a, a really good question. Um, well, uh, I know which ones we wouldn't recommend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, uh, the, the, uh, I, I think we've been having some issue with uh, some of the grey imports uh, that come in. Yeah. Typically, the GPS chip in those uh, are very poor. Um, and also one of the main brands uh, that's making inroads certainly into Africa at the moment is a brand called Techno and we've been having issues with the GPS chip in the Techno phones uh, that we've been using. They may have resolved them since uh, but I think the key thing uh, is to actually look at the chipset that's being used uh, for GPS and making sure that that's uh, a robust and reliable one. Great, right, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so let's move on to the next presentation by David from Tier Fund. Um, David, are you still online? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, Can you thanks hear me? for waiting. Yeah, it's uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. Uh, my name is David Deakin. I'm head of HIV and health uh, at Tier Fund now. Tear Fund is a Christian relief and development organization. We work in disaster relief uh, since 1968 when Tear Fund was formed uh, and also in development in a number of uh, sectors uh, in about 35 countries. Um, I'm particularly focused on countries in Africa and on HIV and related uh, health. So I'm going to tell you about particularly about a project called IMPACT improving parent and child outcomes and the decision to use PoiMapper, why we made that decision and also our experience of using it. 
So uh, to start with, if you look at, um, in, in terms of development, so not disaster relief, but development, uh, you look at what the project needs would be for volunteer health workers in rural areas. So we're literally talking about the last mile, um, you know, the last hundred meters. So very rural areas. Um, the first thing is that, of course, um, we want to be able to, to have our uh, volunteer health, health workers have project information themselves that they can carry without carrying lots of manuals and paper and so on. And we want them to be able to show that information as necessary to their clients. Um, in the impact project, those clients are mainly vulnerable pregnant women. Talk about a bit more about that later. Secondly, we want them to have communication between uh, colleagues or other volunteers, uh, coordinators, uh, and so on, and also with key stakeholders like the Ministry of Health um, or committees within rural villages. Thirdly, to be able to map the communities, so where are, for example, the water points around uh, a village, where are the health clinics, uh, and so on. And uh, lastly, mo uh, not lastly, monitoring of project output. So I distinguish between uh, outputs and outcomes. So from a monitoring perspective, um, we want to know how a project is going in terms of whether the desired outputs um, are being realized. So that's simply um, how many clients are being visited, for example, would be a, an example of a, an output. Um, more importantly, perhaps, is the evaluation of outcomes. So in, in terms of um, HIV transmission, are we reducing HIV transmission? Are we reducing maternal and infant mortality, for example? And that, of course, needs uh, analysis of data um, and evaluation of that. So that's something that we, we um, is getting more and more important because we have to show that um, in, in terms of results and value for money that any project is using donors money well. Um, and finally on that slide there should be something else, yeah, so we're talking in terms of evaluation of performance against objectives um, and then lastly also how do we know that um, the work that we're doing we can attribute any results to our work or what contribution does our work make to the, the greater whole of work that may be going on in a particular area. So we call it attribution or contribution. Now we started um, using mobile technology um, actually at the end of 2010 and in 2011 we uh, did a pilot like lots of organizations do. We called this My Hope Mobile Interactions Bringing Hope um, and we wanted to test out um, adding to an existing project how valuable or not um, mobile technology would be. So we did this six-month pilot in Malawi and Zambia uh, which actually ran 2011 to 2012. Um, next point please. Yes, we were using feature phones, uh, Nokia X302s and as I mentioned we already had a project running so we added the phones to this project and and really look to see what sort of difference it, it, it made. And there were three aspects to um, the technology. One was we used a mobile instant messaging application called Mixit so that people could uh, communicate between one another very cost effectively using data. Secondly, um, the project had a manual and we digitized that manual and stuck it on the phone. And thirdly, we had a very basic data collection um, application um, and it was actually during the evaluation of this six-month pilot that we realized that the data collection was really the poor part of what what we had done as a pilot the the communication the instant messaging and the information was very helpful but the data collection was poor and we realized that for our projects we needed longitudinal data collection so in other words data collection from um, the same clients or the same clinics over time. And we ne also needed a copy of everything that's been collected to be kept on the mobiles of our volunteer health workers. 
Um, we also needed to be able to monitor things uh, in, in terms of these outputs, and also we needed an analysis engine, which we we didn't have in this in this pilot. So, um, in addition to the need to update um, uh, uh, templates and and software fairly frequently as we make improvements, we realised that we needed to move to um, an Android uh, system. And it was then that um, we came upon Poimapper, and um, uh, after looking at um, uh, some alternatives, but Poimapper was highly recommended, we decided to use Poimapper. And we applied it to a new project uh, called Impact, Improving Parent and Child Outcomes. And we have now implemented Poimapper in, for this project in four countries, Malawi, Nigeria, Democratic Republic of Congo um, and Tanzania. And we have around about 150 users. And you can see the picture there of Brenda in, uh, this is Brenda in northern Malawi with a partner called Lisap, who is a tier fund partner uh, with her Android uh, phone there. So what's our experience been? Well, generally it's been extremely good. Um, we've found that the, the software is, is reliable and it meets, uh, most importantly, our project needs. Um, there is a new HTML5 version that we've implemented in Tanzania. We have found that to be more intuitive for users in the field than the older native version. So that, that's certainly an improvement. And, and that version is still, I think, um, uh, you know, going through further I improvements. But we found that, that to be better. Um, what Poimapper have done for us is um, it's important that we have an information module in the system and we have an integrated uh, module for volunteers and so they can also show the information to clients. And um, that's been extremely helpful. It's in multiple languages now for different countries. Um, probably there's room for improvement in, in and I think Poimapper are providing a multilingual uh, system. You heard from Mike. Uh, we have done that sort of manually uh, for each each language, um, but it's been extremely useful. And the proof of the pudding really is that we've collected about 12,000 forms now, um, and uh, very successfully. We also are using the transaction uh, cost pricing model, and um, we've been using the portal for monitoring the evaluation for reporting and that is improving and I think the, the last thing that's really good is that the support from Poimapper has been excellent in, in meeting our needs. So the final slide really is there have been some challenges um, as I mentioned the newer version is more intuitive than the old one so the old one wasn't so good um, we've had a couple of uh, database corrupted issues on mobiles but that's been fixed by deleting the data off the phone and reinstalling the application. Um, we probably haven't used the mapping tools to their full power yet. We found them uh, limited in our own use. Um, also, we have this uh, HipChat instant messaging um, application, but that's not integrated into PoiMap. It would be nice if it, if it was for our needs. Um, in terms of the portal, now we found this a little bit slow in low connection speed environments. When I use it in the UK, it's absolutely fine. But when I'm in Africa and for my African colleagues um, on, on slow connections, then it's, uh, I don't think it's designed optimally for those environments. So we found it to be a little bit slow and the form builder it has to load all of the forms in order to change the forms, and that's um, slow. But I must say that the the whole portal is becoming more intuitive. There's uh, been a lot of development in the last year or so, um, and they've even provided software help and guides now, which are very useful. So finally, my summary would be that Poimapper is an excellent product overall. Um, the interface has been improvement has been improving, and that's very important. There has been some very good support to us as a client over the last couple of years. And it's now not just being used in the impact project, but it's being used uh, across the whole of Tear Fund. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, David. That was very useful. Um, and, and thanks for your honest feedback uh, in terms of challenges uh, that you faced or that the sort of the, the limited use that you have, um, have experienced yourself. 
Um, we still have a few more questions uh, to go. And I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to limit the questions to just a couple more. One question is uh, is more for Mike. Uh, what is the difference between the Point Mapper app and the Point Mapper Plus app? Okay, yeah, great, great question. Um, we've got two products that uh, appear in the Android store. Um, we have the native Point Mapper app. This is the um, app that David was referring to. It runs on um, Android. Uh, uh, all Android devices, uh, whereas Point Mapper Plus only runs on Android 4 devices and, uh, and above. Um, so it's a much simplified uh, version of uh, Point Mapper and doesn't support some of our more complex uh, features um, such as intelligent forms, calculated values, um, the skip logic and, and a few other bits and pieces. Full information is available uh, on our website, um, but the Point Mapper Plus um, application um, it runs on HTML5. It's a much nicer uh, interface to use for our clients, um, and it also has uh, a number of workflow optimization uh, modules built in over and above the native Point Mapper app. Um, both apps can be used to collect uh, data on the, uh, to the same database. It's just on the native version, you won't get some of the more advanced features. Um, both are free to download, um, and, uh, and as I mentioned before, you can set up a, a free one-user account uh, on Poimapper, but please contact me if you'd like to do that, and I'll set that up for you and also arrange uh, for a very short 15-20-minute uh, run-through on how to use it. But we should have you up and running collecting data on your uh, mobile device um, by that time. Great, thank you. Uh, just one final question, both for Mike. It's, uh, it's about sort of additional features. I know, Mike, you mentioned the multilingual feature that will be um, that will be introduced soon. Uh, so, Mike, what are some other uh, features uh, and capabilities that that users can expect in the near to medium future? Uh, and similar question to David, what, what's one or two things that you wish um, Point Mapper can do uh, beyond um, features? So maybe, right. Mike, uh, can you go first? Um, yeah, sure. I think there are two two key uh, things that we're we're looking at, and you, you'll appreciate that we're refining the product as we go. So we're very user driven in terms of the functionality and uh, and the direction that we want to. Um, uh, the point mappers uh, going in. So the two things are the views uh, for multi languages. Um, that's um, j just coming up now. And then the second thing that we're looking at yeah. is really to enhance our visualization um, of the data. So we now have um, plugins for a variety of visualization tools such as uh, Jasper and others that give you the ability to create very quickly uh, dashboards and, and reports um, that introspect the data and turn data from uh, artifacts into knowledge. And I think that's the key area that we're seeing the market um, uh, transition to. Should I just add one or two points to that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so plugins and, and uh, the multilingual. So Support. Uh, from my perspective, um, we we need the um, the portal and particularly the form builder uh, to be able to build forms, um, preferably completely offline, and then to be able to upload them. Um, and uh, that there needs to be. Uh, I think an increasing speed in the portal so it can be more effectively used in low connection speed environments in, in Africa. Um, secondly, this Jasper engine that's, that's arriving which will allow much more powerful um, routine analysis. So we want to have monthly dashboards of of key um, outputs and, and outcome data and that's just uh, coming now for us. 
Um, thirdly, we'd love the chat application that we use to be an integrated feature. Uh, and fourthly, how we both use information within PoiMapper for client information and to be able to provide results back to clients, either maybe using short um, videos on phones or certainly some graphs of, of uh, results. So completing the loop back to the communities where we work um, is an area we'd like to uh, um, see improvement in. Okay, thank you so much, David. Uh, I know we, uh, we're running out of time, so I just want to close the webinar. So here are the panelists' contact information. Uh, Mike uh, just offered um, to provide 15 to 20 minutes of, um, of support for who, whoever uh, requires support, so thank you for that. And David's address is, can be also found on, on this slide, as well as mine on this. So. Last but not least, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are hosting uh, launch events of this uh, catalog in Bali and Jakarta in the next several days. So if you happen to be in Indonesia, uh, please attend the event um, by RSVPing to uh, Edu or Saras uh, at the following addresses. But uh, with that, I uh, would like to close the webinar. Thank you again for everyone's participation. Thank you especially to Mike and David for your presentations. And we, uh, we also ap apologize for any technical difficulties that the participants faced uh, in the webinar. And uh, we tried our best um, to minimize those, uh, those problems uh, to the extent possible. But uh, thanks again, Mike and David. You're and, welcome. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, hope everyone enjoyed the webinar. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.